It's the Lockdown NFL Podcast, your Monday show. I'm your host, Bo Brock. We are now on YouTube, of course. Make sure you're subscribed, like this video in prime time. We're back in prime time tonight, Monday night. Football kicks off. You had the crew on Friday. That was like the dress rehearsal. And now you've got a matchup of the number one overall pick, Trevor Lawrence. You've got the Saints. It's down there. It's at whatever they're calling the dome now. What is it? Caesars now. The Caesars Superdome. I'm going to bring on the host. For the two teams you'll see tonight in prime time, we've got our guy Tony Wiggins, we've got our guy Ross Jackson, we've got a full crew here. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me here. Of course, we watch you guys here every week on the Lockdown NFL podcast tomorrow, Ross Jackson, and on Wednesday, it's Tony and James. Tony, I mean, Ross is used to this. You're not used to seeing your squad playing prime time on Monday Night Football. I absolutely am not used to seeing them. The only time I'm used to seeing them on prime time is usually a Thursday game with the Titans. Uh, right. It seems like every single year it's Jacksonville and Tennessee in week 13 and nobody cares. But, yeah, uh, hopefully hopefully with the new um, the new changes and the new additions, that'll change in the near future. They couldn't hold out one more week for Tebow. We would have had like Steve Levy and <laughs> all those guys just talking at nauseum about Tim Tebow. But, Tony, let me start off by asking you, uh, you know, you, you make me laugh last week talking about this quarterback battle going on. First-year head coach Urban Meyer. What does he need to officially tab Trevor Lawrence, the starting quarterback down there in Jacksonville tonight? Um, I don't know because we've seen enough. The people that, I've been to one practice and then I went abroad, so I couldn't go back for two weeks. But we we've seen enough in practice that he just looks different, and uh, no one down here understands why Urban is doing that. And uh, it's almost as if though he has enough cachet as a coach that you don't really question it. But uh, it's weird. It's weird that a guy who is the most generational talent at quarterback you've seen in a decade comes to a one in 15 team and has to beat out a former six round pick. It's crazy. It's head scratching. Um, and then you've got Ross, you've got maybe the best quarterback battle going on right now in New Orleans. Is, is anybody taking the reins and can anybody win the job tonight? Yeah, I mean, tonight's game is, I think, going to be one of the biggest pieces of the puzzle when it comes to putting together the evaluation for which one of these quarterbacks becomes the starting quarterback for the New Orleans Saints in 2021. Will it be Jameis Winston? Will it be Taysom Hill? We don't know at this time, but I do think that this Monday night game, if Jason, if, if Jameis is able to go out there and you know take advantage of the deep passing game like we've seen him do over these past couple of practices, if Taysom's able to go out there and use his legs, both of these guys have done the thing that makes them special and that sets them apart from one another a ton over the course of this last week of training camp and practice leading up to this game. So I'm looking forward to seeing them be able to uh, get the opportunity to show it under the lights. Ross Jackson, Locked On Saints. Tony Wiggins, Locked On Jags. And of course, the Locked On NFL podcast. Follow these guys on Twitter at Chop Talking Wig and at Ross Jackson NOLA. One more question for both of you and Tony. It was kind of a rough start for the Urban Meyer era last week. What are you looking for improvements across the rest of the roster outside of your number one overall pick? Well, they're extremely vanilla. They were extremely vanilla on offense, but uh, being vanilla and not playing at the tempo that Urban wants, it, th those things aren't mutually exclusive. You can be vanilla, but he just wants you to be vanilla and fast. You know, be, yeah. be quick Be quick at being vanilla if you're going to be vanilla. So uh, I think one thing he's learning is the, the transparency with the fans and the media can work against you a little bit. If you come out and say, I don't want to look like this and I don't want to look like that, and they're trying to tell me not to do this, that's all well and good. But then you're going to get you're going to get the Tony Wiggins memes and the facial expressions because <laughs> that's weird. That's weird that y'all don't figure that out before you come out here and then you have to yeah. tell us, well, I want to do this, but they won't let me. Uh, who are you? Are you the CEO or are you not? What do you mean they won't let you? Do it. You know, so what I think is you want to see a, a, a bigger and better reflection of what he envisions this team uh, being. Uh, the things that he promised, fast, athletic. And uh, you can't recruit, so you got to kind of deal yeah. with, the, with the guys that you have, and hopefully it's good enough. Will we see a heavy dose of Travis Etienne tonight? I think so, because he mentioned that. He said he wanted to see more of him. And um, the, the thing about it is there's pressure when you take a running back in the first round, when you just had a guy who was one of the best rookie running backs. Uh, you said you wanted him because he was explosive and fast. Well, you know what? 
you better go out here and show us something because we had a barbecue for six months man when we got urban and we got trevor and now he hasn't named him the starter so the fans are kind of they're kind of like this is like this is not exciting anymore it's taking all of our breath away and all of this eagerness and they don't play again at home until week two of the of mm. the season so they better show something uh, if not uh jaguar twitter is gonna be lit up tomorrow night because you know the talking heads are gonna be like he can't get it done he can't get it done Back to some of those famous uh, Tony Wiggins therapy sessions that you guys had uh, at least 15 times last season. Ross, the last question's for you. Uh, the wide receivers, no Mike Thomas. Has anybody emerged uh, from this core in, that we should look out for tonight? Yeah, I would definitely be keeping an eye out on Marquez Callaway. He'll probably only get a run with the ones. He probably won't stay on the field to get reps with the uh, twos and threes. He is probably the most proven entity that the New Orleans Saints have at that position right now, Consider it, which is interesting considering he caught just over 20 passes back in 2020. But he's emerged. He put the number one on his chest, and he has absolutely epitomized not only the number, but also the role so far with the New Orleans Saints. He runs a lot of Michael Thomas's same X receiver split in route tree very good at finding holes in zones and getting involved in uh, you know issues or any any type of situation to where a quarterback might have to scramble or buy time. He does a very good job of working his way open. So he's become maybe one of the most trustworthy wide receivers available. But I think a lot of Saints fans are going to be very excited to see uh, Kevin White, who of course was the seventh overall selection back when he was coming in out of West Virginia, but hasn't ever really been able to put it together, marred with injuries, things like that. And Saints fans now get to see if the New Orleans Saints offer offense works for him during this preseason game. I, I keep my expectations low there, but that's another name that they'll definitely be watching out for tonight. Yeah, lots to take in tonight, lots to pay attention to. Ross, you've got the full recap tomorrow. My co-host Alex Clancy sliding in for Luke Braun. Should be a great show. Can't wait to do that. Plus, you guys are looking at the rookie quarterbacks as far as their yeah. fantasy value. Oh, man, it's, it's really intriguing. Tune in. And, of course, Tony on Wednesday. Listen to him and James break down the latest from around the league. Get you ready for the season. Guys, enjoy the game tonight. I'll talk to you soon. Appreciate Thanks you, brother. Thanks for having us. The preseason finish line is this week. Your third and final preseason game. I'm not sure how teams are going to approach it as far as how they'll play their players, their starters, if at all. But four games on Friday, Indianapolis Colts still trying to figure out that backup quarterback position, Jacob Easton, Sam Ellinger. The Colts on the road at Detroit. The good news for the Colts is both Quentin Nelson and Carson Wentz expected to return in some capacity to the practice field this week, according to head coach Frank Wright. Philadelphia on the road at the New York Jets. Pittsburgh Steelers at Carolina and Minnesota at Kansas City. The later game kicking off at 5 Eastern. Those are your four games on Friday. You got another full slate of action on Saturday, taking a look at it, Green Bay Packers at the Buffalo Bills. That could be a 10 a.m. kick in the West, 1 p.m. Some afternoon football on Saturday afternoon. Baltimore Ravens look to push their win streak to 20 straight preseason dubs. They're on the road at the Washington football, scene, football team. Battle of the Beltway there. That game kicks off at 6 Eastern. Chicago at Tennessee. Kyler Murray and the Arizona Cardinals on the road in the Big Easy against New Orleans. Tampa Bay at Houston, the LA Rams at Denver, and a late game, 10 p.m. Eastern kick. Seven out in the West in Seattle as the Seahawks host the LA Chargers, and then a couple more games on Sunday. You've got the games kicking off in Dallas as they look for their first preseason win, their only preseason win in four opportunities. Jacksonville on the road, Miami at Cincinnati, Vegas at San Francisco, the Patriots at at the Giants, a couple Super Bowls we've that we remember fondly. The G-Men taking on the Pats. That game kicks off at 6 Eastern. And then you have your first Sunday night football game of the 2021 campaign. The Cleveland Browns and the Atlanta Falcons. That's going to do it for me, Bo Brock. You guys have a great rest of your Monday, please. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Of course, follow along, subscribe wherever you find podcasts. Tomorrow, it's Ross Jackson, who you heard and watched on this very show, my co-host from the Locked On Arizona Cardinals podcast. He'll be filling in for Luke Braun. Always, my friend, Alex Clancy, good for a couple hot takes and sound bites. You don't want to miss it. They're going to look into some rookie signal callers that you might want to tap into as far as your fantasy football season goes. You guys have a great rest of your Monday. 
Have an awesome week. We're going to be wrapping up the preseason the next time I talk to you next Monday. Enjoy it. I'll see you then on the Locked On NFL Podcast.